Hey, this is Vilus Chestromskas of Limpo and Digisport, the platform that is changing the future of blockchain and sports. I'm here on the edge of NFT, the podcast that is changing the way you learn about all of the greatest projects in the NFT space. Just keep listening. Hi, NFT Curious listeners. Stay tuned for today's episode to learn how Limpo is gamifying the sports collector experience with the help of UFC champion Rose Namayunis. Plus, listen to how open water diving leads to the discovery of new worlds and new perspectives. Finally, hear about how Hot Wheels are hot again as NFTs in a fast and furious way. All this and more on today's episode. Enjoy. And before we move on, don't forget that our Outer Edge LA event recently returned to Los Angeles, March 2023. You can now catch up on all the discussions, presentations, and more by heading over to watch.outeredge.live and registering with only your email address. Then you'll have access to over 60 captivating conversations and performances. Binge watchers are welcome. We'll see you inside. Welcome to the Edge of NFT, the podcast created by Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger, the podcast that brings you the top 1% of Web3 today and what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts of the business side and also the human element of how Web3 is changing the way we interact with the things we love. This podcast is for the dreamers, disruptors, and doers who are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. In today's sponsored episode, we're delighted to introduce Ilias Yastremskis, Dynamic Head of Partnerships at Limpo a platform at the forefront at the intersection between blockchain and sports. Villas is a seasoned professional in sales and marketing. He boasts a knack for designing strategies that catapult business growth far beyond what was thought possible. His forte lies in devising and implementing telling sales and marketing plans, setting companies on a trajectory for unprecedented success. Limpo, a subsidiary of Animal Brands, is innovatively crafting a sports NFT ecosystem with IP rights to globally recognized athletes, sports superstars, and clubs. Limpo is reimagining the sports industry. They aim to provide unique digital ownership-based fan experiences through the application of cutting-edge solutions. Join us today as we delve into this exciting world with Phyllis. Welcome to Edge of NFT, sir. Hey there. Pleasure to be here. Um, so uh, I'm going to dive in here uh, with the first question. You know, you guys are doing some really, truly special stuff, immortalizing career-defining moments. Uh, you've got top athletes in there. You've got licensed NFT collections. And uh, I'm really just curious, from your perspective, how this all came about and how you, in particular, became part of the journey at Limpo. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, the whole story of Limpo started uh, back in the first, when we had the first ICO. And this we, we used to be a health fitness app application, which helps users to monetize as they, as they exercise. Uh, after the acquisition of Animalka Brands, the model slightly shifted and we became, uh, not having this background of sport uh, and, and all those connections in the sport field, uh, we decided to stay in a sport world, but just shift into NFT side up a little bit more. Uh, so we established our own platform where we basically uh, create the uh, NFT collection. So talking now more specifically about the upcoming project that we do for uh, Rose Namo Unit. Um, so what we uh, basically creating is a gamified collectible experience. So uh, it's not just a simple, I purchased the item and, and I'm a collector, I, I have this item, but it's more about that you have to combine certain elements. Uh, you have uh, to create, combine an avatar of Rose Namayunas, and only then you breed this avatar to upgrade him to higher level. And by upgrading, you're eligible for different tier of re rewards. So the most simplistic ones are like t-shirts uh, with Rose branding uh signed t-shirts hoodies but then it goes all the way above and beyond like getting uh, sign hair signed uh, gloves from one of her fights 
uh, or even having like a cameo session with her or live training. So getting tips from like UFC champion, it's a big thing. And I don't think so. Uh, it's something you can purchase easily. Uh, so we are trying to create those experiences for her fans uh, that are unique and couldn't be purchased anywhere else. Yeah, and, and that's really a highlight of what you guys are up to. Um, a lot of people are, are excited about Rose Nam Yunus. Um, you know, uh, um, among them, folks here, our producer here, Sean, was really excited to hear that we're going to be talking about Rose today as well. Um, so, you know, could you expand upon how the partnership came to be and like how, how you're integrating with her and in, in, any other developments that are going on there? Yeah, so. Uh... Two years ago, when we launched our original NFT platform, uh, which is still existing right now, uh, Rose was one of the first athletes we signed. Um, at the time, she was uh, still fighting very actively, and she had a massive uh, following base, and she still has right now. Um, so throughout those two years, we managed to build this relationship and uh, credibility in each other. So like, uh, two years ago, there was a lot of skepticism about the NFTs. Even there is some right now, but it's all about educating her about the things, uh, what's going on in, in the digital space. And and she, so two years ago, we launched a collection. It it was successful and we still have that. Uh, but um, the current project that uh, we proposed to her is all about bringing her fans and um merging them into into digital world so basically that she can monetize her exposure but as well fans can uh, have this unique gamified way of of collecting her avatars claiming prizes and it's all about increasing her brand awareness as well yeah i think that's a really cool way to do it um for all those listening right now for rose namayanis if you, if you don't know her she also goes by thug rose so if you go and, and do a quick search you'll pull a ton of really cool information and like you were just alluding to you're you're really trying to like she, she promises to help transform fan engagement in sports but how do you see that engagement unfolding into the future utilizing this platform um very good question um i mean one of the biggest problems uh, in today's society is that uh, fans cannot really interact with their favorite athletes yes there is like social media where you can be one of the hundred thousand who makes a comment and expect that someone will get back to you uh while likewise uh, athletes um uh, using web2 tools they don't have really a way to monetize their exposure as well uh, and their brand uh, yes there are some paid content that they can do but in general web2 platforms uh they don't pay for those clicks, uh, like Instagram, uh, even though you, like athletes are those who create content there and uh, who make profit to the platform. Uh, so that, what Web3 does is basically allows athletes uh, to earn by creating the content. So like uh, releasing Rosnominus avatars, uh, creating this whole gamified digital experience. So. Uh, I believe that it, it's like what what Web3 can do is uh, really eliminate some of the pains of of Web2 and of physical world and and collectible experiences. And um, I think just as as the platform will evolve, we're gonna have more and more athletes joining their uh, fans in the space as well and and just having those unique experiences of of sport collectible mark mm -hmm. yeah and and i think you maybe alluded to it earlier if, if i'm correct the there's sort of a design element here you know probably both physical you know aesthetic but also just kind of uh intellectual right like like design thinking type type of using new technologies um, and so you're designing a, a, a unique fighter for this collection. Uh, can you walk us through how that how that goes and, and the thought that goes into it? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's the word I mentioned, gamified the collectible experience. So this is where all of this uh, unique fighter 
co experience is uh, coming in. So uh, the flow is uh, quite simple that users are purchasing mystery boxes uh, from Digisport platform. Uh, there are various size of boxes. So coming from the bronze one, which is going to cost at the first stage only $5, and then going all the way to the diamond boxes. Uh, once you get the box, uh, you basically have uh, stickers uh, in, in that box. And out of those stickers, you need to create your unique fight. Um, so there will be a wide range of those athletes and each of them is unique. And as as you acquire more stickers, so one of the stickers can be he Rose's head, the other can be her legs. And once you combine those stickers, then you uh, have like a beginner, first initial stages, beginner NFT. And, and out of this beginner NFT, then you breed it into different levels. And as I mentioned, like uh, with different level, you have different rewards unlocking to you where the legendary one is like the, the top one, uh, which allows you to participate in the raffle for, for the main prize. Yeah, it's great. It's a way to really get that engagement going and to gamify the experience of being able to get some of those really exclusive types of prizes. And I think a lot of people are going to be able to resonate with the lore of being able to get some of these really cool experiences. But on top of all of the things that you kind of described with us, I know that you probably have a ton of other things that y'all are y'all are working on. You can't necessarily talk about all of them, but I'm sure there's some that you can share with us. So anything on the roadmap from partnerships, artist collaborations, or any other features that people should be on the lookout for? Um, yeah, sure. So, I mean, we have over 50 athletes right now uh, onboarded into Limpo main platform, uh, which provides minting and staking utilities. Uh, so we are continuously uh, expanding this portfolio and continuously signing athletes. Um, and now our all focus is on DigiSport uh, in terms of the um, sports collectible market. So we are doing this first uh, project with Rose. And after we finish, like we, we finish with this project, then, uh, looking to add more athletes and, and provide uh, more these type of experiences with some adjusted elements probably. So if there was a, if there was like a massive uh, bracketed fight among all of the athletes on your platform, who would win? <laughs> that, 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 that's a very good question. But I don't want to be biased. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I'll let uh, the audience to decide. All right. Well, that's a good question for the social medias. Yeah, that's good. But, but Rose would be one of the favorites. One of the tops. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say. Um, yes, yeah, they're not all fighters, of course, but you know they've got their own, uh, you know, hit points in various categories. Um, all right. Well, before we wrap up the the main questions, it's been really really fascinating to learn about this project. Definitely kind of cutting edge and exploring new territory, creative ways to utilize NFTs. Like you said, you got to do some stuff with minting and staking. Um, but but what what else is going on outside of Limpo that you're watching, you know, that you find intriguing or interesting out there in the Web3, uh, in the Web3 domain? Um, I mainly follow everything what's across uh, in the market brands portfolio. Uh, I mean, we, we have over 500 investments with the portfolio is quite uh, large. Brands. There are quite things to follow. Uh, as a, uh, So from this side, mainly uh, as being a Mockaverse holder. So that's one of the Animalka brands project that they have launched. So uh, a big fan of this and following the space and seeing uh, how the uh, project progresses. Um, outside the Animalka, um, I'm myself a sport fan as well. Uh, so so rare, uh, dapper lives. What these guys are doing, it's it's always uh, intrigued to watch for me. Cool. Have you guys uh, contributed any interesting perks for Mochaverse holders, or haven't decided on uh, this yet? Uh, we actually just uh, did an MA session with Rose herself. Those couple of weeks ago, she joined uh, the Mochaverse space and and. She talked with all the mockers about the uh, UFC hair fighting experience. So th this was very interesting MA. Uh, and yes, th there will be some more elements that we do specifically for Digisport. Uh, 
so like whitelist allowances uh, and other interactions with mocha holders too. Cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, the ecosystem in Anamoka brands is 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 awesome. Uh, we went to NFT NYC and there was an Anamoka portfolio day, and just like being in the room and just seeing what people are building is just absolutely incredible. And uh, so, yeah. I just want to give a quick shout out to that. And it's everyone expert in their own fields, and it's good that like this whole decentralized world allows us to share those ideas, to uh, to collaborate with each other, look for the ways. Uh, like this all entrepreneurship mindset and building things uh, on the spot for each other. It's that, that's really fascinating. And if you're a listener, um, but you want to catch the video on YouTube, go check it out because Animoca Brands has the coolest Zoom backgrounds of any of our guests. Uh, they've managed to <laughs> incorporate like cool animations, make sure they highlight all of their top top properties and. Uh, so catch that on the YouTube segment. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been really fun um, doing the main questions here, but let's get on to edge quick hitters. Uh, I think this is going to be fascinating. It's also always fascinating to hear from people who grew up in different places than we did too, because the answers tend to be a little bit different. Uh, so anyways, edge quick hitters is a, a fun and quick way to get to know you a bit better. 10 quick questions. We're looking for just a short single or a few word response, but feel free to expand. If you get the urge, are you ready? Let's give a go. He's ready at 4.30 in the morning. Born okay, ready. here we go. Born ready. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Probably a computer PC back in when I was like six years old from my saved money. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's that, quite that, practical. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, that's... But... It was definitely not a laptop, and this was this all big, big TV size <laughs> PC. But I remember playing uh, NBA Life on this, and this was one of my first experience. As and, a and you wanted it for for like the video games, or or, or what exactly what were you doing with it? Yeah, yeah, it was mainly like uh, for for gaming at the time. Cool, Just having fun. All right. Question number two, uh, what's the first thing you remember selling in your life? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, if from the childhood, then uh, we used to have in the school those days uh, when everyone prepares something, um, they basically ever cook a cake or or make something unique handmade material and then there is like this day in the school like like a market day where you you sell your items there you improve your sales skills so i think i was like nine years old there and i had some cake i made with my mom so that that was the experience i remember uh selling that cake standing in the market in the middle of the classroom <laughs> i bet you ate i bet you ate away some of the profits too didn't you <laughs> You, you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, what is the most recent thing you purchased? Oh, that, that's an easy one. I uh, just did my open water diving course here in Philippines. So that was like one of the best experiences I had in my life so far. Like, yeah, it was really amazing. Dude, it's awesome. I um, I got mine earlier this year and like I'm, I'm doing my first dive trip uh, in a, soon and I, I'm super pumped about it. So, so I do. Yes, it's amazing. Awesome. Um, I didn't flip- expect this to be I didn't expect to be like uh, like that. That's so fascinating. Like I did diving once with instructor, but when you can dive on your own as well. Oh, it's powerful, yeah, it's man. It's, it's peaceful down there. There's so much you can see. So shout out to everyone out there. If you're listening and ever want to do your diving course, uh, I will recommend it. And it, it, it sounds like uh, Villas will too. Um, but what is the most recent thing you sold? Uh, probably one of the... Uh, oh, no, actually from physical items, just sold uh, my PlayStation. Uh, just get... get don't have enough time for this so i decided to make give it to someone else <laughs> all comes for a circle bought the computer <laughs> gaming computer sold the playstation yeah, <laughs> all 
<laughs> All right. Uh, question number five. What is your most prized possession? Oh, that's a tricky question. From which angle you want me to answer? <laughs> Uh, what are my options? <laughs> <laughs> so probably, if not monetary value, then yeah, it's family and friends would be, I, I would say. That's Which of your friends are your favorite? Just tell, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll drop their Facebook to you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Question number six. If you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, physical service experience that is currently for sale, what would it be? Uh, I wouldn't mind to have one of the crypto punks in my collection or one of the board apes. So going back uh -huh. to the NFT market, that would be the answer. All right. Sounds good. Sounds appropriate. Yeah. The, some two solid <laughs> projects to, to, to be owning for sure. Um, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would it be? Um, Probably persistence and and never giving up on on things you do. So that's that's a very important aspect, I think. So um, that sometimes even I like have all of us sometimes give up, but just the ability to stand up and and continue and doing things you like. Absolutely, I think that's a great trait, and you definitely need it in the world of Web three, where <laughs> three months feels like an entire year. So on the flip <laughs> side of that, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits uh, for the next generation, what would that personality trait be? Oh, mm -hmm. that could be on the flip side, willingness to learn. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but uh, probably, mm, yeah, just being more, uh, I know next generation is a very tech savvy, but uh, don't forget uh, the real life as well and 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 human interaction. So that's probably one one of the important things as well. So work and technology is important, but as well, don't forget your personal life. Sounds good. Yeah, much appreciated on that that angle. Um, all right, question number nine. What did you do just before joining us on the podcast at 3.30 a.m.? <laughs> just woke up. <laughs> That's probably the best answer. And there... Is there going to be a flip side question as well? What I'm yes, yes. Well, but I, I'm already, I'm curious, was there some sort of chilling shower involved in making this all happen yeah. or... Yeah? All right. Yeah, definitely have to take one. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I happen to do a cold shower this morning too, so we got something. In it's very there. effective. It's very effective. I Does the trick. Does the trick. All right. Question number ten. Yes, the flip side. What are you going to do next after the podcast? I'm uh, gonna do some admin work, and then probably gonna have a few more hours of a good sleep. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, definitely don't blame me for that. Um, and as we wrap up the final fun question, the bonus one. So you, you told me that you got your diving license. Where's your first dive going to be? Probably going to do here still while in Philippines. Uh, diving is very great here. Uh, one of the best uh, surfaces and, and, and experiences, I would say. So it's probably going to be till I'm, until I'm here. I'll try to do one. Awesome. Well, I'm going to have to follow up with you to, to see where the good spots are so I can check it out one day. <laughs> sure, oh, yeah. Sure. All right. Well, good stuff. Have fun. Uh, make sure you get enough sleep and enough cold showers where appropriate. So that was a fun segment. We'll head to the next one now, which is hot topics, where we hit some of the news of the day. Um, let's start with this one. Um, revving up the NFT market, Mattel is unveiling a fast and furious collection Get into the world of the Fast and Furious, and it won't cost you a pink slip to your car. Time alongside the release of the latest installment of the Fast and Furious film franchise, iconic toy maker Mattel is set to launch the newest edition of its Hot Wheels NFT Garage series based on the global blockbuster series on May 22. So very interesting. Um, Hot Wheels was one of those 
players I remember, you know, as we did the podcast, you know, you would see kind of who's jumping in and they're, you know, one of those things where it, it seems like it made a lot of sense. Of course, collectibles, as we've seen, I wonder if there's a history of collectibles, be, you know, it's just a human thing, right? We like to collect things and there's beyond that, there's always within the human population, the collectors that are even more beyond that. Um, did you ever get into to collectible cars? Have you been watching uh, what's going on with with Hot Wheels uh, Villas? Um, I was a big fan of collectible collectibles when I was a child, and I I assume most of you collected those baseball, basketball cards when there was no internet. Uh, so it it's really good to see now that everything transitions into digital space. Um, haven't collected Fast and Furious cars, but but <laughs> and Hot Wheels, but <laughs> hopefully I'll get a chance. Yeah, it's a big um, fan of Fast and Furious. Oh, it's the same. So I've seen all the Fast and Furious movies. We'll absolutely admit that. And huge Hot Wheels fan when I was a child. I collected so many Hot Wheels. I'm sure back in my parents' house in some old toy box, I have all of them still. Um, so my inner child is very happy to hear about this collaboration and that is being brought into the NFT world. Yeah, I mean, just little cars, they're just fun. They're fun to drive around and race them around and do cool stuff with them. It says um, Hot Wheels NFT Garage and, and Fast and Furious Collection will reside on the Flow blockchain. So we were talking about Dapper Labs or, or earlier, uh, featuring cars uh, from the movies, including Dominic Torretto's 1970 Dodge Charger, Brian O'Connor's 1969 Camaro, Suki's uh, played by Devin Aoki, sister of DJ NFT magnate Steve Aoka, Aoki, Honda S2000 from Too Fast, Too Furious. Limited edition NFT will sell for 20 bucks a pack. It sounds pretty reasonable. Something fun and digital. Uh, all right. I don't know if there's much else to say about that. That was fun to check out. Let, let's check out... Um, this next one um, about Jack Butcher. So Jack Butcher is expanding the Chex NFTs ecosystem with physical print backed elements collection. Uh, Jack is the founder of the creative agency Visualize Value and artist behind the Breakthrough Chex uh, VV NFT collection. Uh, it's releasing a new project. That's the Chex elements. It pairs generative artwork with hand drawn physical prints. Um, again, this is sort of like a walk down memory lane for me as uh, having started the podcast and watching the various things going on. Jack Butcher was a very early, you know, NFTs, you know, what are they? What does it mean? Making art around it, making NFTs um, and continue to be a character that people look to for, you know, uh, an opinion with integrity, you know, creativity you know, knowledge, knowledge on, on the topic and things like that. Um, either you guys follow uh, what, what, what Jack's up to? Lately, uh, uh, not as heavily when he first came and hit the market. Yeah, I, like you were saying, like he, he's used being a voice for uh, different ways you can get involved and, and do some cool stuff. But cool to see that he's keeping it going. Yeah, and the concept yeah. of visualizing value, I uh, I appreciate just in general. I mean, I was, you know, for for those that that aren't paying attention to every episode, you might hear every once in a while. I did my PhD in neuroscience, and I got really into at the time, you know, data visualization, and uh, I became pretty good at making cool data visualizations. But at the same time, um, you know, there's people that are way better than me. But uh, you know. Uh, great software called processing, which I learned to use to code uh, art and, and visualization, data visualization and stuff. And then there was the, um, the uh, NYU had a program called the ITP Interactive Telecommunications Program, where uh, there, it was a master's program where you, you could go at the end of semester and you could see all these really cool projects that people were doing in innovative design. And oftentimes there'd be some cool visualization and stuff. But Jack is is particularly fascinating because he does his visual, visualizations in this very simple, you know, consumable way. Vilas, did you have another comment? Uh, no, no, just uh, said that I just definitely need to follow this. Haven't been following check marks. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, looks like really cool stuff. All right, well, uh, encourage listeners to go check that out. Um, it's good. It looks to be a promising new project and uh, should be really fun. Uh, all right, let's move on from hot topics to our next segment. And that next segment is going to be just kind of 
wrapping up here. Um, you know, we, we like to give a shout out. Uh, Villa Sola say, you know, probably just going to shout out Limpo today. So we'll skip that. Uh, but, you know, before we roll out, we always like to check where listeners can go to learn more about you and the projects you're working on, Villas. Uh, yeah, so uh, Twitter is the main space uh, to follow all the news on Digisport and uh, Digisport XYZ, that's the handle, and uh, Limpo uh, IO, that's uh, for, for Limpo overall as a, as a company. Uh, also, our main platform right now uh, for, so, for interaction is the Discord. Uh, so if you go to Limpo.io or Digisport XYZ, you can find our Discord. Uh, link there and and you can join uh, and chat with our community members our community is quite active so you're gonna have those some of ogs who are gonna guide you uh through all period of time and and are gonna introduce you to all the new things that we are building all right we have reached the outer limit at the edge of nfts for today thanks for exploring with us we've got space for more adventures on the starship invite your friends recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey also much better how go to spotify or itunes right now rate us say something awesome then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole look us up on all major social platforms by typing edge of nft with no spaces and start a fun conversation with us online lastly be sure to tune in next time for more great nft content thanks again for sharing this time with us today the views and opinions expressed on the edge of nft podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests we're learning as we go just like you please make sure to do your own research our podcast is not financial advice there are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people you understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk 